Hello and welcome to module 14, Routing Concepts. All right, don't forget to take your notes and submit them when you are done. All right, so moving on to Routing Concepts. All right, so path determinations. What is the definition of routing? Routing is when a router receives a packet on one interface and determines which interface to use used to forward the packet to the destination okay uh, so here's what i want you to write routers use routing tables to find the best path best put that in quote quickest best path means quickest to the destination they're trying to find the best path to the destination when a router receives a packet it routes the packet the following way so i'm gonna take step by step um you don't have to write that down, but just listen carefully. Um, when a router receives a packet with the with the destination IP address on it of the incoming destination packet on it, it's going to perform. So this uh, this is router. This is the show IP route. This is a routing table. There's two directly connected networks and a static network. So this directly connected network says. I have network 192.168.10 with slash 24 is directly connected to fast ethernet 00. 2.0 is directly connected to serial triple zero. And there's a static route. If anybody wants to go to, this is what it means. Anybody wants to go to 192.168.3.0 slash 24. All right, this is the administrative distance one because it's a static route. They should be sent to this interface, 192.168.222. All right, so there are three routes in the routing table. So when a packet comes in, the router is going to look at the destination MAC address, uh, IP address, and end it with the first slash. Okay, and uh, if the result is this, the network address after the ending, then the router will send the packet to this interface. If there is no match, we move on to the next interface, uh, next slash. Do the ending with this mask, and if the result is this, the packet will be sent to serial triple zero. If not, if if that doesn't count, if that doesn't work, you'll go to the next slash, the last entry in the routing table, and you do the ending with that. And if there's a match, you send it to this interface to go out. Now, if none of them matches, then the packet is dropped. Why is it dropped? because the gateway of last resort is not set. Okay, and then ICMP will create a message going back to you telling you that the, uh, the, the device or the network that you're trying to reach is unreachable, meaning the router is telling you, I don't have an entry in the routing table to send your, uh, your network anywhere. Okay, so that's how the routing table works, uh, one by one. We should also, in the next chapter, we're going to be talking about default routes. So in case there is no matches, we'll send the packet somewhere else to a different router. And that means we're going to set the gateway of last resort. All right. So what happens if you have equal paths? Well, if you have equal path, the best path, the longest match. By the way, so... Um, it, the router does, let's say... 16 here and the 60 let's say this was slash 16 instead of slash 24 and this was slash 24 right so uh this would have matched and this would have matched if this was a slash 16 because the first two is 192 and 68 so the router will say hey a second there's two matches i can't send them to both so the router will pick the slash 24 because this has a longest mask it matched, in other words, more bits than the slash 16, assuming that this was the last 16. All right, so that's that. That's the prefix that I'm talking about. So here we go. For example, slash 12, slash 18, and slash 26. So this would be the longest match, even though they're all the first 16 bits are the same. All right. Uh, same thing with the IPv6 address. You'll do, the, you'll do pretty much the same thing. All right. The routing table has two entries. They have directly connected networks. That's the one with the letter C. And remote networks. Okay. 
which are networks that are not directly connected to router. Router, router learns about remote networks in two ways. Static routes, which are added to the routing table uh, 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 when route is manually configured, or dynamic routing protocol. The routes are added to the routing table when protocol, when routing protocols like OSPF, EIGRP, or RIP2 communicate with each other and update their own table. Directly connected networks, please write these down by the way, the directly and the remote network and the, um, the default route, which we'll discuss in a second. You can write just the first sentence on the default route. The directly connected networks is when you go to the default gateway on the router and you give it an IP address, like you type INT G0 slash zero, you type in the IP address, and you, as soon as you type no shut and you activate the interface, then the router will go immediately to that interface, figure out what the network address is that you just type, you know, and they will place that entry in the routing table as a directly connected route, which means the default gateway on the router is represents that's the network for well that's not the network that's the um that's the default from that default gateway i can figure out what the network that is attached to that interface and that will be a directly connected network so if anybody asks you how do you find a directly connected network on a router or how does a router get that uh, entry in the routing table is when you configure an interface and you activate it Right? All right. Dynamic routing protocols is when they talk to each other. Routing protocol, router, routers talk to each other. They have a software like RIP or EIGRP or OSPF. They talk to each other and they build their own routing tables. Default route is the one that I talked about earlier when you don't have a packet at the end, when you don't have a match at the end of the routing table. And if there is no match, that's where the default route comes in. It's going to specify the next hop router to use when the routing table does not contain a specific route that matches the destination IP address. We'll discuss more of that um, on the next chapter. All right, packet forwarding. There are two types of packet forwarding, which we'll, do, we'll get into. Um, packet switching and fast switching. So packet switching is when the CPU goes through every entry to find the match and send it to the exit interface. Fast switching is the same as uh, is the same process as process switching, um, but it it uses a fast switching cache. So in other words, it will cache the information first, check the cache memory, and uses that instead. Makes it a little bit quicker. All right. We talked about how it makes the decision. So you take the IP address, you do the um, ending, like I discussed earlier here. And then if there is a match, you send it to your destination packet, the Des uh, destination interface. All right. Um, to the next hop router. Otherwise, you'll drop the packet if there's no match in the routing table. Right? Uh, so what happens is there are three types of packet forwarding mechanisms that uh, Cisco routers uses. Please write these down. The process switching, fast switching, and the Cisco Express. The one that I just talked about earlier, just a few minutes ago, is the process switching and the fast switching. Now, when it comes to the Cisco Express forwarding, a CEF builds a forwarding information base, FIB, and an adjacent table. The table entries are not packet triggered like the fast switching, but changed trigger, such as when, the, when something changes in the network topology. When the network has converged, the FIB and adjacency tables contains all the information that the router would have to consider when forwarding a packet. All right, so um, you're talking a packet when it comes in. I look at the destination IP address and I try to find the exit interface. Imagine yourself inside a warehouse and packages are coming in. And you have, let's say, for example, these are all exits. So you are in here. You look at the destination zip code on the package 
and you try to figure out which truck to send it to. One is going at east, west, south, whatever. So this is the serial triple zero. This is the fast Ethernet exit. And there's trucks in there that takes the data out for you. So depending on the zip code, you look up where is that zip code is located in the routing table. And then you say, okay, this has got to go west and you send it out of here. Where do you get all these entries that you're looking at in here? That's either you can do it statically or dynamically, right? And that's where we need to discuss. How do we populate the routing table? Should we do it statically or should we allow it to do dynamically? But that's for another discussion. This is process switching. This is what you're, this is really the main core of what the um, operating system in the router is doing, all right? Routing. Now, that's process switching. The, um, the other type of switching that I discussed earlier, the fast switching, is you have a cache. So instead of trying to figure out where to send it to, if you did this before already, you say, oh, this network is, look, you send it immediately here. You don't have to look up which interface you need to send it to because you already did it before. Uh, CES has a backup. So in case one of the network fails, you can send it immediately. Right, so you have the FIB and adjacent tables that can send it directly. You don't even have to wait. So this is a little bit quicker. Right, so imagine you directly from in and out, in and out, in and out. All right. Uh, when it comes to um, router uh, configuration, we did that already. I don't think we need to get into that. Um, we'll do that again on our in our class activity. We're going to do plenty of configuration. So, but this is um, an example of what we're doing. This is how you en enable IPv6 on a router. You remember, um, this is how you secure a router. This is the basic configuration um, in terms of securing the router with uh, the passwords. And here, how you would in configure an IP addresses on the default gateways. So, uh, when you can, when you configure an IP address on a gateway such as this, for example, an IPv6, uh, IPv4, let's say address, the router was going to come in, take the IP address that you did with the mask, and them together, figure out what the network address, and then that's a directly after you type no shut, that will be a directly connected IP address in the routing table, an entry in the routing table. Here are some of the commands to verify um, that the routing tables are there. You can type show IP interface for the interfaces, show IP run for the specific interface, and so on. All right, so all of these commands we'll be able to play around with, including the uh, one with the pipe. You can break it up into sections, include, exclude, or begin. So you can have just an area where you want to take a look at in the running configuration file. All right, so um, I will stop right here. So write everything that I asked you to write up and I'll see you on the next video.